Hello and welcome to our brand new channel. It's the Today in African History channel for the 26th of July. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know that this is only our 26th video. And for those of you who are here for the first time, yes, this is our 26th video. The channel is still brand new. We're still um, taking subscriptions. Um, so if you do like what we're doing here, um, do share this video, subscribe, of course, turn on your notification bell so that you receive updates of our video uploads. Like the video as well. That would help spread this video to other like-minded people, people who are interested in African history, people who are interested in promoting the future of Africa, people who are interested in learning from our history, good and bad, and how we can use that history to propel ourselves forward as Africans. Wherever we are in the world, African Americans, of course, they are originally descended from Africa. Those on the African continent, those in the diaspora, in the United Kingdom, in Europe, Australia, Asia, South America, wherever Africans are found, African descended peoples in the islands, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, New Zealand, Haiti, wherever you are, we're all one family. So welcome to the family. So let us get cracking with events that have shaped our collective history as Africans. It's the 26th of July. There is a flag there. Do you recognize that flag? I'm sure you do. It looks like the flag of another country as well, the more widely known flag. We'll get to that. Before we do that, let's start with the first event in recorded history that I have put forward in this channel. So we go to this young man here. His name is Sifo Gumeide. He is an artist and master of jazz music. Sadly, he died on this day in 2004. Now, who was he? Born in the predominantly Indian community of Kato Mano near Durban, Sifo Gumede started playing music on a homemade guitar. He joined his first band at the age of 16 and soon became a known and sought after bass player. In the course of his career, he recorded 18 albums under his own name and four with his band Sakile, formed together with Kaya Mlangu and Mabi Gabriel Tobajani. In the year 2000, he returned to KwaZulu Natal, where he taught music and performed for young people until his death on this day in 2004. So this is Sifo Gumede, artist and master of jazz music, who passed on on this day in 2004. So by the looks of things, it looks like he was quite popular in South Africa, especially in Durban, where he was born. Next, on this day, and we go back to that flag, which some of you, I'm sure, would have recognized as the Liberian flag. So there we are. And of course, it looks like the flag of the United States, the stars and stripes. Okay, so what happened on this day? The year was 1847, and Liberia declared her independence. So her independence was signed, and Liberia became a sovereign nation. Slaves freed from the slave ships were sent to Liberia instead of being sent back to their countries of birth. These colonists formed an influential group in Liberian society, and in 1847, they found the Republic of Liberia and instituted a government modeled on that of the United States. American-born Joseph Jenkins Roberts became the first president of Liberia, and the capital city, Monrovia, was named after James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States. Very interesting. 
So Liberia, the first African country to gain her independence, became independent on this day in 1847. It was a a bit of a different kind of independence, if you like, not the sort that swept through Africa in the 50s and 60s and 70s, especially the 60s. You know, these um, countries wanted to get rid of their colonial masters who had come to colonize them on the African continent. In the case of Liberia, freed slaves who were born in America, so these were originally Africans, obviously, but they were born in America, they went to Liberia and then never came back home. So America was home for them at the time. <clears throat> so for Liberia, it was a bit different, if you like. So Liberia, on this day in 1847, Africa's oldest republic gained her independence in 1847. 1956 was the year, and the man here is a former Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser. So on this day, in 1956, Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal Company, which prior to that was owned primarily by British and French shareholders. He seized control of the Suez Canal and nationalized it, sparking a crisis that later resulted in French, British and Israeli forces briefly occupying parts of Egypt. So, essentially, French and British built the Suez Canal. It was in Egyptian territory, so obviously he did the right thing and then took back the stuff. Obviously, the British and French were not amused at what happened. But um, it's, um, it's a bit of a, an interesting situation. Now, you've come to my country. Now, I'm just using my name now, my me as an example. You come into my territory, you take hold of my territory by force, then you develop my territory, in this case Egypt, build the Suez Canal, and you're probably thinking, okay, I've taken your land, I've you know, suppressed you, I've oppressed you, um, all that we've built belongs to us, you can't do anything about it, and this guy rises up and says, nope, you've done this in my land, and you've seized this land by force, we don't want you here anymore. We're going to take the stuff you built. Tit for tat, you know. It's not the best, but I mean, he had to do what was right for his people. So that's what happened on this day in 1956. Kamal Abdel Nasser seized control of the Suez Canal and nationalized it. Of course, it did spark a crisis. Okay, 1963 is the next event on this day. So... July 26, of course, the year was 1963. Commissioner of Basutoland, Bashwanaland, and Swaziland issued the Prevention of Violence Abroad Proclamation. This proclamation made it an offense for persons to conspire against, incite, or instigate violence in South Africa or other neighboring countries. The history of the British High Commissioner for Basutuland, Bashwanaland, and Swaziland, and Governor General of South Africa dates back to 1931 when the posts were created. Next, on this day, the Republic of Stellaland is founded in Southern Africa. The year was 1882. Now, the Republic of Stellaland was, from 1882 to 1883, a Boer Republic, located in an area of British Bechuanaland, now in South Africa's northwest province. After unification with the neighboring state of Goshen, it became the United States of Stellaland, from 1883 to 1885. During its short history, the small state became a focal point for conflict between the British Empire and the South African Republic, the two major players vying for control of the territory. After a series of claims and annexations, British fears of Boer expansionism led to its demise 
and among other factors set the stage for the Second Boer War. Last but not least, the year was 1952. Pictured here is King Farouk of Egypt. Now, this was the day he abdicated in favor of his son, Fuad II. Farouk, born on the 11th of February 1920, was the 10th ruler of Egypt from the Muhammad Ali dynasty and the penultimate king of Egypt and the Sudan, succeeding his father, Faud, in 1936. As King Farouk was known for his extravagant playboy lifestyle, while initially popular, his reputation eroded due to the corruption and incompetence of his government. They tend to go hand in hand, don't they? Corruption and incompetence. He was overthrown in the 1952 coup d'etat and forced to abdicate on this day in favor of his infant son, Ahmed Faud, who succeeded him as Faud II. Farouk died in exile in Italy in 1965. You know, there's a saying that how you do one thing is how you do everything. Um, I don't totally agree. I would say how you do one thing is how you do most things. Now, this guy was a drunk, and um, it's very difficult to be a, a drunken womanizer. So he was womanizing, so he had a playboy lifestyle. Extravagant playboy lifestyle would include, usually includes drinking. Okay. So on, so on the one hand, you're a playboy, you're extravagant. And on the other hand, do you think it's possible to run a country properly if you had those inclinations? Very, very, very unlikely. So you see where the saying, the saying goes that how you do one thing is how you do, in my case, I would say how you do most things. Yeah, of course, he wasn't entirely evil. He started off very well. So that would have meant that he had a good side, but he didn't end up very well. He died in exile in Italy. What a disgrace, you know? You're the ruler of your country, and then you end up dying in exile in someone else's, I mean, in Italy. Obviously, exile, you know, would, that would, when you say exile, that would mean that you're not in your country. And then his infant son succeeded him. I wonder what was happening in the intervening years, you know, when the infant son was still an infant, between his infant years and his adulthood. There must have been someone who would have taken over the reins of power. Um, but yeah, so that's what happened on this day. Um, again, the year was 1952. That's the year he abdicated, obviously, on this day, the 26th of July. Okay, so we don't want to keep this too long. This, I think, is one of our longest videos so far. That's it for today, folks. Thank you for joining us. Like I said, if you do like what we're sharing here, do subscribe to the channel. Let our young, vibrant channel grow. Think about the future of Africa. Think about this video years to come and how this would have touched hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people, people who want to move the continent forward. You know, there are a lot of countries in Africa now that offer investment opportunities. For those who have never been to Africa, African descended peoples who've never been on the continent, those who live on the continent, there are opportunities everywhere. There are opportunities everywhere. The country, the continent is vibrant. It's the youngest continent on the planet. It's the fastest growing in terms of demographics, in terms of population. Take advantage of the opportunities in Africa. Think about your children. Think about your grandchildren. Think about your great grandchildren. Take the opportunity now. Okay, this is your homeland. Grab all of the opportunities available to you now. Until next time, thanks for joining us. Have a good day. See you tomorrow, July 27th. Bye for now.